Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to a special episode of Gwent Edge. In today's episode, I want to try and play a few matches with the sacrifice deck that you might have seen the Gwent Edge episode about uh, today as well, I think. I uh, might release these two videos simultaneously. Um, the suggestion came to me by Samuel Ward, so thank you, Samuel, for the suggestion. So what we're going to do today is just play a few matches using the Sacrifice deck so we get a better idea of how to actually get the most out of it. Because I understand that the normal Gwent Edge episode in those 10 minutes might not be enough to uh, just show you how you can play everything, get the most out of this deck and how to play certain combos effectively and when to, when to play certain cards and when not to. So we're going to try and put that in, into practice in uh, a few matches with uh, yeah, just real-time opponents in ranked play. So uh, here we go. So first matchup against Squiatel. Squiatel has been really popular because of Crimson Curse. Because uh, the Squiatel, new Squiatel leader actually won the faction challenge as well. So if you're not the first player like we are right now, I would keep at least one Marauder in hand. And then the fanatics can usually just go. There we go, because we can get two fanatics with this fall blood totem anyway. So as usual with my videos, this video is going to be edited heavily just to cut out any, uh, well, empty space like what's happening now. But now I'm talking over it. So uh, you'll see certain cuts in the video. That's not because I want to hide stuff. It's just because I want to skip to the more interesting bits. So this deck is actually ideal to play against opponents like the... Well, what's her name again? Etne. Because Etne just damages the unit by one four times. Which means that she will probably not be able to do much against most of our units. But as I said, first play when you're the second... Uh, want to play as the Marauder because that gives you a straight up six points if there are no other allies on your side of the field. So there we go, six damage on Gabor Zigrin. Ooh, the tree ant is a dangerous one, so we should probably keep in mind that we should not. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play artists now because artists have everything that is played just uh, by health. So artist jam damages uh, every unit that is played by half its current power. Which is gonna be nice. Could also purify Gobbo so he loses his resilience. Which I think is what happens. So he does that. And I'm probably Melane to completely kill him. Oh no. Ooh, that is nasty. So we lack a bit of attack power in this deck. Which I'm very well aware of. But I think we might be able to pull this off anyway. So especially in situations like this, we're at a severe point of disadvantage. But that doesn't mean that we're actually lagging behind necessarily. Because we can set up a few loops with this deck that can actually just get us back slowly. So let's start with a light longship. And that 3 end is just going to go back and forth. So now it's going to boost itself, I think. Heal it, heal it. Damages the unit by three. Okay, fair enough. That means we can set up the Flaminica to heal that up. Like this. At times nature needs a help. Just let him heal the longship. Let her heal the longship. Uh, but of course now the tree ant is going to move again. Might not be able to win this round. Yeah, and now the tree ant is going to move and kill us off. Oh, yeah, even with that. But now the tree ant can actually move. What are you doing? Why are you damaging your own units? That was weird, but... Yeah, definitely gonna pass now. Because this isn't gonna work. But that tree ant boar is really powerful. Because you can keep healing and damaging all the units like that. But, uh, yeah, let's pass. Point difference is a bit too big, even with an extra card. So let's just pass... She already used two of her four charges, which is fine by me. And of course, Gabor, um, Gabor gets his health back, which is not something I had in mind there. Because it's five. We can deal with that, but still, it's a bit annoying. Um, the Marauder is actually perfect if he passes. So let's leave that over there and then the Butcher out of the way as well. 
a trap. Might as well just play Moon Dust. And do it like that. And then I can use the Marauder on the next turn. And that's a Fireball Trap. I'm gonna be annoyed. Just because if this is a Fireball Trap, then I'm gonna be stuck at 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm gonna have to throw away another card. The time of the white cross and white light is now. Okay. So we're still one card ahead. Might as well use the Svall Blood Totem now. Yeah. Svall Blood Totem now. And get our two fanatics on the field. And then the Marauder might actually catch whatever trap is still in there. Or it might actually be the Horn as well, the Mahakam Horn. He wants an easy victory, but I'm not going to give him that. Or her. Hmm. Look. A unit. I'm gonna play the Marauder now. Yeah, of course. Of course. Definitely. For fuck's sake. So it's not a fireball trap. And it's not a crushing trap. So that means it is... It is the Mahakam Horn. And that is annoying. But let's start using our Berserker units. So, one hit on Viltkarl, which is gonna trigger his ability like this, and gets us over the point total of our opponent. But of course, that is a Mahakam Horn. He's gonna get 8 points out of that. Get this oh, for fuck's sake, yeah, okay. Can't really do anything about that now, can I? So that is annoying. But of course, with our big units like that, we... Are really vulnerable like that as well so let's just start putting our engine damagers on there so we can actually take out at least one or two of those and more locks definitely so yeah it's a really annoying disruption deck which is too bad actually really really too bad but let's just put the priest down there And get a bit of use out of those units. That's gonna give her... Ah, of course. Yeah, full-on damage. And I, Yeah, this deck is really vulnerable for full-on damage decks. If they're really high-powered damage. So yeah, even bosses. So that means we won't be able to do anything, I think. Because if I use not the callus, I can do 3 damage on Siaren. Damage him by one. And then get... Uh, I'm gonna do it like this. So use Fall Blood's abilities on my units. So doing it like this. And then one more hit. No, I'm gonna save that. So now I can damage Ciaran once. That gives her four points. Let's reset that. I uh, know, I'm still I'm still behind, so I can't even win like that. So there's a horn, four more points, and we're done. Yeah. Okay. I was just completely overpowered. But it's good because Vildkar was easily taken out by Geralt. So a matchup against monsters. That is interesting. Cause yeah, the Arakas Queen is usually at a disadvantage against Skelligadex. Which might also be the case. So this time we're the first one to play. So our Uncrate Marauder is not gonna get us much help. The Tweersack Axeman could actually be interesting in combination with artists, and I haven't really shown that off. So let's get rid of the Heimei Protectors and check it out like this. Okay, so this time I'm hoping we're actually going to win instead of uh, go down horribly. But let's start this off with a Dimmon Light Long Ship. So like this. And I'm not going to boost it just yet, so let's just end the turn. Because long ships are really handy just to do those one damage bits every every single turn. Uh, so they're really powerful kind of engine units. And then if we combine that with the Heimei Flaminica, we can actually heal him every turn as well. Heal the boat. I don't know how you heal a boat with a healer, but there we have it. 
So let's just use the Hey May Flaminica right next to the boat. Get her to 9. And then use the boat to start damaging the Vran warrior, which is of course powerful in its own right. And there we see the healing effect of the Flaminica every time we go over there. So that's part one. We set up a healing loop. So we can just continuously damage everything we play. So that's of course the Frightener is an interesting card since it spawns a high powered unit. After, is that actually spawning? Awaken the Frightener. Is that playing? Because it doesn't really say if it plays that or not. But uh, let's play Artis. Because Artis is going to have every unit that is played. But we have a healer on the field, so that's going to help us out. So there we go. One more hit on the Vran Warrior. And then end the turn. Now, if he wants to destroy stuff, he's going to have to hurry. And then we get a lock. Now, what I can do, of course, is... Fix that by damaging myself. Which is something I, I, I've added the Moon Dust Bomb for that purpose. Because I know a lot of my units actually gain benefits from getting uh, damaged as well. So if I purify a unit and then damage it, I actually get that back. So if we purify our healer, we can actually get that back. Although, I don't know if I really, really want to. Because I can play a lot of this out as well if I want to. So... Let's just... You know what? Let's do that. It's a, it's an unorthodox move, so let's just purify and damage my own unit. And then we can kill off the Vran Warrior in one go. And there we go. One turn off the Frightener, and we can end it right there. Then, of course, our boat gets healed again, because the Flaminica is still alive. I do the best. And now, of course, there goes the Flaminica. But because of Artis... Uh, every unit that the opponent plays is halved in power. So we can use the Axeman to kill anything we want like this. Uh, but now, since we still have the boat on the field, I'm just going to damage Whispers and just keep going. Um, what else can we do? I could put Sigvald on there as well if I want to. I want to be careful not to play out my most powerful units in one go. So let's just go with the Svalblood Totem. And get those two fanatics on the field. And the turn. And there we go. So that's that. I think I might just go with the Tweersack Axeman. Yeah, let's just go with that. Tweersack Axeman Twersack! on the front warrior. Axeman is going to get damaged to one as well. And then we kill Wispus, which will, yeah, get the Frightening out. But that's just 12, and it's an immune 12. And it is, of course, a transformation. So nothing spectacular about that. And then we just use the Totem to transform our two fanatics into abominations. So that's two damage on those. Now, I think I might as well just do the Berserk transformation of Field Carl. And get this train going. So if I do this, I get my uh, transformed bear immediately. Then if I play the boat on the Wild Hunt Rider, we get more damage in. And let's end the turn there. And we get a pass, yeah, as suspected. And we can just pass as well. So there we go. First round hours. Aha, there we have Yennefer. That's good. Because of course, it's an Arakas Queen. So we're going to get have to deal with a lot of those tiny, tiny creatures as well. The drones. Um, I could set up a loop with the Heime Protector. But might as well wait off on that. We get another light longship. And maybe swap out the cultist as well. And we get Olaf. Okay. Okay, because we haven't been able to play off our most powerful combos just yet. But let's just pass on this one. I want to use most of my cards to end this since we have Yennefer as well. Yennefer will be able to clear out the board uh, immediately if there are too many drones on the field. So 
And like this, we're gonna have the last card. So if we can play Yennefer or Geralt as the last card, that's gonna be fine. Aha, now we're getting into more interesting loops. So we have the Marauder. The Marauder is usually nice if we wanna use it in like uh, just to attack uh, on a starting turn, but wanna see if we can get one more unit out. If we can get our healer out. Ah, oh, we don't. Okay, never mind. So, Barbagazi, we're getting the consumes in here. Uh, I could use Blue Boy Lugos if I wanted to. But I think it's gonna be better if we hold off on Blue Boy Lugos and just go with Olaf first. So, let's go with Olaf first and put him over there. So, Olaf, you can uh, boost Olaf. By twice the amount he has damaged. So usually it's a good point to start damaging him. And of course we get a ruin. Fair enough. Don't have a way to banish that, which is fine. Just gonna see how far we can put this. We can use the Svalblood Priest to start damaging Olaf. But if he has a Cyclops in his hand, he could, will probably destroy ruin and damage my priest with that. No, he won't. Hmm, interesting. So that's the loop he's gonna do. I can't really do anything against that. Uh, but I can, of course, start to use my own loops here. So the Heimei Protector next to Olaf. Which is gonna boost... Both the Priest and the Protector. Now we get a lock. Okay, fair enough. Now, we should probably set up Sigvald. And then the turn. Because most of our cards are going to be handy to take out. Because, of course, Geralt will be able to reset that entire row. So, whatever points are there on that first row right now are not going to be useful to us in a second. Uh, so, let's... Put Blue Boy Lugos on the field. Blue Boy Lugos is interesting. So we're going to use Sigvald to damage Blue Boy Lugos. Because Blue Boy Lugos actually does 2 damage every time he gets hit. Which is a really, really cool ability if you ask me. Um, is there anything else we should play? We're going to play Nut in the next turn. We're going to actually damage Blue Boy once more. There we go. That's against us a bit, but uh, end of turn. So he's probably gonna say thank you or something like that, because he's uh, he's nasty like that. But let's help him out a bit. Let's use Nut the Callus on Olaf. Damage Ruin by three, so that doesn't really get him much. And then use our remaining two charges on Olaf. And then, of course, when Olaf is down to that amount of health, he can actually be doubled up on and we get 15 points on Olaf. So already we're above the point total of our opponent. We can damage Blue Boy Lugos once more if we want to. But should I hold off? I shouldn't hold off. There we go. And we destroy another drone. For Arkas drones, so that's what I was anticipating, which means that now with uh, I'm gonna use Sigvald once more on Blue Boy Lugos because I'm gonna lose him in a second, and then we can use Yennefer to just damage every opponent, well every thing by two, which is gonna kill off all the Arkas drones. You cross the wrong there we go. Clear out all the drones. And we're ahead with still two cards in our hands and one more very powerful uh, engine card on the field. So keep on doing that, we can have those. So with Ulfidin we can have the power of uh, Brewis over here, 8 damage. And Sigvald is almost down to half but still at 1, so let's just destroy a few more Arakas drones. Like this. I don't think he'll be able to recover from that. So he's gonna spawn three more Arakas drones and then probably... I don't know, 4k or something? Ah, of course. 
So now he's above us. But Glusty Warp has a base of 3 and Barbagazi base of 5. So that's 6 and uh, 8. Which is definitely going to be the better option. So let's just restore that entire row. Take that out and just get rid of another Arcus here. Goodbye. And that's how we deal with the monster deck. Victory. That's of course a, a very hard counter to uh, a dead bugs deck, uh, which was kind of a, a variation of uh, my deck, one of my first videos I made on Gwent Edge. But there we go, first victory of the video. Skelliger, so yeah, the discard deck is also something you uh, often see, which is annoying to play, but we're gonna try and make the best of it. To play it against is what I wanted to say. So... Artist is going to help enormously here, so I'm going to leave him in. Get rid of the Axeman and the Moon the Dust Bomb. There we go. You know what? Let's even start with Artis. Let's start with Artis and boost them up to 10. And then the turn. So we get a restore, which is, yeah, pretty much nothing. And he wasted a special card on that. Well, let's start off with our uh, Fanatic then. Might as well make the most out of it. There we go, and then the turn. Okay, so that takes out Artis. He's using his special cards just to get rid of that. Uh, fair enough for me. Fair enough for me. So let's just get Joanna in between them here. Yeah, like this. So we haven't been using Joanna just yet, but uh, there she is. She's a great healer, especially if I she can survive. Um, then, with that, I can actually use Blue Boy to its full effect. So if I use him, Come on, let's go. Time to I can actually go damage him twice to get rid of that annoying bastard over there. Like this. And then we can use Joanna. So Joanna gets a charge every time one of her allied, so adjacent allied units is damaged. So now we can use her to heal both Lugos and Artis. And then the turn. So 20-0 after four cards. So you can discard all you want. It's not going to help you a bit. Oh, and that didn't actually trigger. Interesting. You got lucky there, buddy. And doing this interesting as well, using the uh, our tactics against ourselves, but with the Svalblood Priests, we could technically just keep going. So a few things we can do here. I think I'm just going to use Yennefer. Because otherwise we won't be able to use her effectively. So let's just use Yennefer like this. Best now. So that triggers both those guys, but that one guy actually died already. And then we can heal up everybody. Like this. And then the turn. So completely wasted his, uh, his fall blood totem there. Okay, so Olaf, which isn't too bad. Let's just use this Fallblood Priest on uh, Blue Boy Lugals, maybe? Might as well do Blue Boy Lugals, right? Yeah, there we go. Accept our sacrifice. I can reset uh, Olaf if I want to. So that should be fine. That just damages by two, right? Save. Yeah. I will save. We get another discard. And another damage, which is fine. And that boosts Olaf up to 12, but we can reset him if we want to. Remember that. Then, Nut. Nut the Callus. Might we be able to use Nut the Callus like this? We might. Let's just use Nut to damage our Abomination here to the right by 2. And take out the... well, damage the Bear Abomination. Uh, maybe just heal the abomination, damage blue boy by one, and heal him up to full again. There we go. 
I think he's gonna pass. Because every hit Blue Boy gets is two damage, and I get two heals of, well, a boost of two from the Priest as well. So this is a great setup. So let's pass, and that's gonna happen again. There we go. 31 14. So that was a great loop. And now, of course, we lost our major hitters. So we're gonna have to be careful. I think that's a pretty fine hand against something like that. Maybe get rid of Ulfidin. Because Ulfidin is usually better against high powered units. Hmm. Okay, so we could technically just pass now. But I know that a discard deck might actually take advantage of that. So let's just go with this Fallblood Fanatic first. And try to lure him out. Because discard decks often get the advantage of longer rounds. Because they can manage what's in their hands a lot easier. And they get a Banish. But with that the Marauder can take out Regis in one go. And end the turn. Um, hmm. His pals, okay. Let's just use Sigvald. Sigvald, Sigvald, the damage dealer. So, uh, if we can pull that off, that would be nice. We're gonna get damaged by the skulls. Which is not too bad, because I can reset with Gerald if I want to. There goes one, and the Marauder goes down. So that's two damage because of the discards. And then let's use this fall blood totem. And get two more of those guys on the field. And then we can damage Harold Houndsnout ourselves. And do it like this. So we're still ahead. Don't you pester me. And we get another discard, of course. Oh, he's not even gonna do anything. Okay. Well, then I'm not going to do anything either. Let's just keep damaging Harold Houndsnout and stay one point ahead. So, one other discard. And we get a transform. And two more damage with another transform. Sixteen twenty-one. Could restore, but restore won't help me much. So I think I'm just gonna have to pass and learn to deal with the uh, point deficit there. Although, although, who knows? Who knows? Let's just uh, let's just play this out completely. So let's do two damage on Harold Townsnout. And then we can do Svall Blood on the Sig Vault and the uh, Bear Abomination. And then trigger the Totem, and we get more boosts, and then reset game. that row, which also resets my Protector. That wasn't really great, was it? That wasn't really great, just wanted to try that out. But I'm wondering what card he's gonna have to throw away now. Because he's really hesitating, because this card decks really don't know how to deal with just two rounders like this. So he probably will be able to win the round. Question is, is that a good thing? And there we go, we got an equal. So, uh, too bad, buddy. Too bad, buddy. Yes. Do you think you're dead? Yeah. He's uh, wondering that himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. So he had to play out both of his cards. He, he, he fumbled there a bit. Oh, this is perfect. I'm gonna get rid of the Heimei Flaminica now. And uh, the longship. Let's get rid of that as well. Get another longship, okay. So, Olaf is gonna be nice. If we only get hit once, we can swap him out with the Heim. Because I was, I wanted to get a match where we pulled the Heim and we didn't get one until now. The guns are with us. So that is useless. Great. 
Now, Olaf. No, it's risky to play Olaf so early, but I can switch him with the uh, Heim and then boost him to max if there's a problem. So the Heim is really cool to have a switch around. So you can swap this unit's power with a damage unit's power. So you can either basically drain a, an, an enemy opponent that is damaged or you can damage Olaf, for example, by one and then swap him around with the Heim and double up on his boosts. Which is great. So now we get one damage on Olaf. I don't think he'll be able to... Yeah, there we go. He passed. He realized his uh, position was futile. So there we go. That was a nice one. Very nice one to end it with, I feel like. So that's how you deal with discard decks. Just confuse them a lot. Not too shabby, I think, for a deck. Because neither deck... I wanted to maybe end this video with that. None of these decks are all powerful. Uh, I think most of the decks that are all powerful, everybody already knows about. And that's not what I want to make videos about. I want to make videos about interesting decks that have a sort of theme about them, that are just really fun to play with, that are not always the same deck that everybody else uses. So that's why I never did a video about Gurney Korra. That's why I never did a video about the new Squire Tell decks already. Because, uh, yeah, they're just a bit too powerful to my taste. I just want to have a few options where we can... Uh, just play around with and win in unexpected ways like we just did. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this little, uh, well, practice video of uh, Gwent Edge. And I hope to see you guys in the next video right here on the channel. Thank you guys enormously for your support and goodbye.